My name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a consultant cardiologist in York, and today's video is on the subject of high blood pressure, and in particular about a condition called nocturnal hypertension. Um, now, the subject of high blood pressure is both confusing and hugely anxiety provoking for patients. The unfortunate thing is that even medical practitioners, many of them, don't quite understand blood pressure. And this shows in the way blood pressure is managed in modern day medicine. What is a complex underlying process has now been simplified to a set of two numbers. And if those two numbers are higher than what a bunch of experts thinks is normal, and every so often this bunch of experts will change their mind, and there is a difference in expert opinion from continent to continent, then the patient is told that they have high blood pressure and they're consigned to a lifetime of anxiety and an ever-increasing set of expensive and potentially harmful pills. If we think about it, it's a very clever way to use fear to generate profit. Tell everyone whose number is above a certain value that they're at risk of something bad happening to them. Strike the fear of God into them. Give them a label so that insurers can start charging them more get them on medicines for life so that the pharmaceutical industry can benefit, let them have side effects from the medications that they're given, and then give them more medications to counter those side effects. And the best thing about it all is that if and when something bad does happen to the patient, blame it on the fact that they had high blood pressure without even questioning why the patient was subjected to treatment in the first place if that treatment didn't prevent the bad thing that the, the medications were prescribed for. So, and the most amazing thing is that the patient will continue to comply and they will never ever know whether the medications have actually prevented something bad from happening to them or not. To my mind, this is bad medicine. This kind of medicine uses fear to enfeeble and enslave patients. This is not the kind of medicine I set out to practice. I believe that good medicine enlightens the patient. Good medicine is based around logic common sense and good science and should serve to empower and liberate the patient. I'm not saying that blood pressure is not important and at least in some patients lowering of excessively high blood pressure is definitely a good thing. What I am saying is that we should be more sophisticated in trying to work out what an individual's risk is and managing the individual rather than subjecting a whole population to the indignity of taking tablets in the hope that someone somewhere may benefit. High blood pressure, to my mind, reflects a process. A process which suggests that the body is in some way stressed. It is also true to say that if the body is chronically stressed, then indeed it is associated with worse outcomes for the patient in the long run. The difficult thing, however, is to recognise this stress at an early stage. And one of the measurable manifestations of that stress is an increase in blood pressure. And in that sense, the blood pressure numbers may help recognize the presence of an underlying process going on. However, we are all different and therefore we all have different numbers. Furthermore, our numbers change all day long. Our numbers go up when we're stressed or anxious or exercising and they're lower when we rest. So when you have constantly varying numbers like this, which set of numbers should you be relying on? because your number could be one thing in the morning, one thing in the evening. Which of those do you use to compare with this kind of standard that has been set, set by a bunch of experts? You know, is, it the, is the best set of numbers taken first thing in the morning? Is the best set of numbers taken last thing at night? Or should it be an average of two separate recordings? And this is all very confusing. And the most important question is, even if the numbers are a little bit high, are they high for you? So you can see how confusing it all is. And to my mind, the answer is that the important numbers to rely on are the numbers that have been shown to be the most predictive of harmful events in the future. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about the best numbers to use to work out whether your blood pressure may be high for you or not, okay? Now, as doctors, we recognize that isolated blood pressure recordings are entirely useless. They cannot be used to make a diagnosis, they cannot be used to predict prognosis, and they cannot be used to 
monitor a patient's response to treatment because they vary all the time. So you can put, you can measure something. It may be artificially high. You may then give them medication. And when the patient comes back because they're anxious, the blood pressure is still high. And a doctor may then be misled into thinking that the blood pressure medication isn't enough and increase the blood pressure medication when actually none of those numbers that the doctor was working with were reliable in the first place. So isolated blood pressure readings are a waste of time. The best way to get a good understanding of blood pressure is to use something called ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. Here, a blood pressure machine is strapped to the patient for 24 hours, and the machine will automatically measure the blood pressure twice every hour during waking hours and once every hour during sleeping hours. And then all these recordings um, are, computer, are um, compiled and then averages worked out. And you get three averages, okay? You get a 24-hour average, so all the recordings averaged out. You get a daytime average, all the waking hour blood pressure readings averaged out, and you get a nighttime average. And all research studies on the subject of blood pressure monitoring have found that the most reliable, non-invasive method for accurate assessment of blood pressure is 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. The results are reproducible because all the variability tends to get averaged out. An ambulatory blood pressure monitor can be helpful to give you an accurate representation of blood pressure numbers. It is more accurate in terms of making a diagnosis. It is more accurate in terms of predicting prognosis, and it can reliably assess response to treatment. One of the most useful bits of information that an ambulatory blood pressure monitor can give you, which no other easily available non-invasive monitor will give you, is that it can tell you about your blood pressure at night when you are asleep. And in many ways, knowing about your blood pressure at night can be very useful. For one, the patient is at rest and many of the confounders that affect our blood pressure, like stress, like exercise, etc., are minimized when you're asleep. So it takes those things out of the equation. And therefore you expect a much cleaner number, okay? Not so noisy, not so variable. Secondly, if there's a process going on in the body, then you would expect that process to be going on all the time whilst the patient is awake and whilst the patient is asleep. And therefore you would see changes reflected in nighttime readings too. Now, our blood pressure should normally follow a circadian pattern. So this means that when we're sleeping, our average blood pressure should fall by about 10 to 20% compared to daytime values. This is called nocturnal dipping. So normal people have nocturnal dipping. The blood pressure falls by 10 to 20% at night. If you take a population of patients who have a history of high blood pressure and then do ambulatory blood pressure recordings, you will find you will divide them into two groups. You will find those patients in whom there is nocturnal dipping. So the blood pressure, even though it's high during the daytime, actually falls by 10 to 20% at night. And then you will find another group in whom that doesn't happen, so the blood pressure doesn't fall, and may paradoxically even go up at night. So you have a group of dippers, nocturnal dippers, and a group of either non-dippers or reverse dippers where the blood pressure actually goes up. And when you follow these groups up, when you follow these two groups up, it is commonly observed that it is the non-dippers or the reverse dippers who have the worst prognosis. So if you have high blood pressure and you're a dipper, you will generally do much better than someone who has high blood pressure and who is a non-dipper or a reverse dipper. Those patients who are non-dippers or reverse dippers have a higher risk of strokes. They have a higher risk of heart failure, higher risk of heart attacks and higher risk of cardiovascular death. This is particularly useful because it allows you to work out also that whether the blood pressure is high for you. You're not really comparing your blood pressure to someone else's. You're comparing your blood pressure. You're looking at yourself and you're saying, OK, well, this is what should be happening to my blood pressure at night. And it doesn't. So in some ways, if it isn't, it's telling you about yourself. You're not just comparing one value with a set of values decided by a bunch of experts. And that's really important. It is also worth also knowing that in some people, uh, patients have um, elevated numbers at night, irrespective of whether they dip or not. And these patients are termed as having nocturnal hypertension, meaning 
that their blood pressure, even though it may dip or it may not dip, the blood pressure is above a certain value. Current guidelines, uh, American guidelines, say that the nighttime average readings should not be above 110 over 65, and the Europeans say that the current uh, nighttime average should be not be above 120 over 70. About 30 to 50 percent of those people who have high blood pressure during the day will also have high blood pressure during the night. And these people have a much worse outcome compared to those people who have um, high blood pressure during the day, but actually at night the blood pressure is okay. Those, the people who are, tend to be at more at risk of nocturnal hypertension are older patients, patients with kidney disease, patients with diabetes, patients with elevated calcium levels, elevated uric acid levels, elevated homocysteine le levels, they tend to be more prone to this nocturnal hypertension. So what I'm trying to say is that there are two things you can observe in nighttime blood pressure. One, the dipping status, and the second is that even if a person dips, if the blood pressure is above a certain value, uh, then that can also be, that, that's called um, nocturnal hypertension and can be associated with worse outcomes. What is also really interesting is that in some patients, you may have normal blood pressures during the day, and therefore these patients are not diagnosed with high blood pressure, but they still have the process going on. And therefore, if you do an ambulatory monitor, you make a couple of really interesting observations. Again, some may not dip, so you may have a normal blood pressure during the day, so you go to your doctor, blood pressure is okay, but you do a 24-hour blood pressure monitor and you don't dip and those patients tend to have worse outcomes. And then, of course, there's another group of patients in whom there is some dipping, but the blood pressure still remains excessively high at night. Uh, and those people are called, as are termed as having isolated nocturnal hypertension. So some patients may just be non-dippers, some patients may have isolated nocturnal hypertension. But the point is that these people will not be diagnosed as having a problem if they're only assessed during the day. And therefore, and also we're not quite sure as to which one is more important. Is non-dipping more dangerous compared to just having high numbers at night? And most people think that they offer independent information. So if you uh, don't dip and have very high um, uh, blood pressure readings at night, you do worse than someone who doesn't dip but has normal blood pressure readings at night. Similarly, if you have high blood pressure readings at night and you have dipped, you probably do better than someone who hasn't dipped. And so now many experts feel that perhaps the best information about prognosis from blood pressure is gauged from what the blood pressure does at night when the patient is asleep. And so why is this important? Why is it important to know this? Well, nocturnal hypertension and even dipping status is only diagnosed with ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. So if you haven't had a 24-hour blood pressure monitor, you may be at risk and you may not even know about it. The second thing is, if you have high blood pressures at night, there may be a cause for that, like sleep apnea. And it's important to know about that because Sleep apnea will not only do that, but will increase the risk of so many other things happening. And therefore, if you can find it, if, you can, if something helps you suspect it and it is treated, uh, then you become a healthier person. Another thing worth knowing is that there are some medications which seem to work better at restoring dipper status and reducing nighttime blood pressures. There is some evidence that calcium blockers, and there's also something called uh, eliscarin, uh, which seem to be more effective compared to medications such as beta blockers at lowering nighttime blood pressure. So if you had that, then maybe uh, treatment would be modified in a way that you take those medications which work better at night. Finally, and the most interesting thing to say, is that there is a lot of evidence that suggests that changing the timings of when you take your medications can be very helpful and have a measurable impact on prognosis. So taking the medications at night before bedtime may be preferable to taking medications in the morning. In my practice, I rely heavily on ambulatory blood pressure monitoring to diagnose and manage patients. Uh, and perhaps the only reason ambulatory blood pressure monitoring is not used more often is because of cost. 
if you want to understand your blood pressure, I would highly recommend ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. And they're not even that expensive. And now, actually, with the virus and the pandemic, we're actually able to post them out to patients. So, you know, you're worried about your blood pressure rather than worrying about it. You get a 24 hour ambulatory blood pressure monitor sent to you through the post. You put it on. It records for 24 hours. You take it off. You post it back. And then we can download the blood pressure recordings and um, uh, give you a really, really good assessment of what is going on with your blood pressure. Uh, this is a service I've started offering many of my patients. And if any of you are interested, please email me at yourcardiology at gmail.com. So I hope you found this useful. I think it is really, really important. I think we should be a lot more sophisticated about understanding blood pressure. Um, but unfortunately, cost effectiveness uh, is the problem. And uh, a lot of times uh, people just look at numbers and just give you medications on the basis of isolated readings, which is clearly not a good thing for the individual, even though it may be a good way of offering, uh, trying to treat a population. Great, thank you so much. Again, once again, I'm so grateful for all that you offer, uh, for all that you do for me. And um, uh, this is the new year, so I wish you a really happy and healthy new year. All the best, bye.